Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Today we're looking at what would be a fine addition to all you fantasy role players out there, and that's Roll and Play, a Game Master's Fantasy Toolkit. This is a spiral-bound notebook that includes multiple chapters, each with multiple tables for you to maybe find different character names or items, challenges, pretty much to help spice up your campaign. As you can guess in the title, this is really based around more of a fantasy theme, so more of your basic Dungeons and & Dragons and Pathfinder and less your Starfinder. But once again, you probably can adapt things as you adapt anything, including when your one friend wants to play as that specific race from a certain property. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, there's definitely things you can tweak, but yeah, it's certainly a fantasy genre is probably where you want to be with this. And the idea is, you know, as you play, you as the GM, you would use this. And if someone runs into a character you didn't name yet or a tavern without a name or they found some loot and you didn't have an idea for it. You can roll a die, you flip to the page you need, and you figure out exactly what it is. And you can improvise that, you can add to it, of course. I mean, it's your game, you can do whatever you want. Or you could even just forgo the die altogether and just look through and say, oh, this looks good. Or maybe use this just for as an idea while you're prepping for a session and say, I don't know what kind of enemy they should fight. Oh, here's some interesting descriptions of enemies that might... Uh, spice things up a little bit. And uh, we got the chance to uh, play some Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition using the book. As I am the DM of our campaign, I'm the one who actually really got to experience the thrills of using this in the midst of a session. And I must say, it you know, I am someone who I get nervous playing D&D a lot of the time <laughs> uh, as the GM because I'm always, I think like every GM, I, and I know you can relate to this, Will, one from one, when you, you've you uh, game mastered, you worry you worry that you're not going to come up with something or they're going to, your players will surprise you and you won't have an answer for what they want, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we had one notorious session doing the, it wasn't Dungeons Dragons, it was the, uh, I forget what the Fancy Flights series was called based on all the apoco apocalypses, apocalypse, <laughs> yeah, the, whatever. The end uh, of the world. It, end of the world with zombies where um, it was the entire session was just like, I had some really terrible name choices and also some other really weird finds. <laughs> but you know. I mean, I mean, you know, you're, you, uh, you're hard on yourself, but, but still, you, you know, the struggle and that this thing is meant to alleviate that. And it really did for me, make me feel more confident while we were playing, knowing that if something comes up, which inevitably that always happens, that the players <laughs> are going to run into something that I'm not ready for. We um, do our best. <laughs> yeah, I, I look for, you know, oh, here's a, there's a name for a character I can use. And I can, all you know, you don't have to use the exact name or maybe uh, you can use that as their last name and add a first name. And they have stuff for like a lot of different situations in here you know, types of food being sold at a tavern, uh, different encounters for different areas. I actually used one specifically, and we haven't, we haven't discussed this. So this is a reveal for you as well. Uh, in our last session, you guys were heading back through town to the uh, inn that you're staying at. And I figured, you know, this is like a, supposed to be a big, lively town. I wanted something to happen, but I, I didn't have anything planned for this, but I thought, you know, something should be going on in the town in addition to just whatever their quest is. And I looked up urban encounters. There's a, there's a list. I didn't roll for it. I just looked for one that I thought might work somehow fit into the overall patchwork of the campaign. And it was, uh, that a, a strange reptile was, uh, appears in the town's well and someone is screaming about it. And we didn't have a well in our city. It was a fountain. But I, so that's one example of just a little tweak, adapted it, and it led to some interesting things happening that, you know. Right. Of course, while it was a surprise, like I didn't expect you to throw something like us, as players, you know, we did our best to, even with your surprise, send it back to you in a very big way. <laughs> but, <Right. laughs> uh, if you want to hear more about that, you'll have to listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check out our Patreon but, page for that. Yeah, for me, you know, you when you make a campaign, usually you'll have the big overarching strategy that you know is yours. Like you plan to have us come against, let's say, a big dragon, for example. And you've got the like the major plot point down, but getting there 
in a way that makes it feel realistic and lived in is where a lot of the fear comes in, you know? What happens if they want to visit a town keep because they want to just do some shopping? What happens if they want some potions or, and you didn't really expect them to do that? And then coming up with names for people because they're like, oh, wait, what's your name? Yeah. You know, instead of just going, Bob, you know, I, I think that's what the book is for. It's almost like instead of just being like dropped in the middle of a, uh, like a grocery store, it's like being able to see what food you already have to begin with. And then from there, you can sort of be like, all oh, right, I can cook this meal up. Or if, like you said, I don't have that, so I'll just change this this out or something. Yeah. Like with the fountain or even the names, you know, like I'm looking for something that maybe should sound a bit more elvish or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I, to me, I think it's nice to have that, not even for the randomness, just to be like, what are some options there? And some of them, I like the way to describe things. For example, the one of the things I thought was hilarious was the, the loop page for the, for when you would never come across, you know, the mimic, it says, when you open the chest, you find some teeth and a tongue. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is a mimic. And I, w I would love to just read it like that, you know, to some players and like, you find some teeth a tongue, <laughs> you know? Yeah, they happen to be in a shape of a mouth. Oh, it's around your wrist now. Yeah, no, there are some nice little touches like that throughout. And I, well, most of the tables are for like uh, more, I, not flavor elements is what I'm looking for, but they're, they're more for like your exploration, like things you find. There are uh, several things that are more tied to mechanics and have more in-depth uh, explanations or ideas for how you can do things mechanically. Like one of my favorite things in here is there's a list of games you might play at a tavern or wherever, uh, like chess or an arm wrestling contest. And they have little ways of, oh, use this stat and roll, have the players roll these dice and see what happens to resolve who won that game. Or even for, they have tables as an optional kind of variant or house rule for crits and misses during combat, where if you get a critical hit or a critical miss, you can roll and they will have some kind of extraordinary extra effect that could either be very good or very bad if players like that. I actually wanted to bring that up because, look, a crit always feels great. Who doesn't like it when you are able to just nuke the enemy when you weren't expecting to? But to have something cooler to be like, you know, you shot your arrow so fast that the enemy is dazed and like, because one of them is like the enemy is confused and is unable to attack next turn. To give that kind of flair to your game and someone's not like, oh, I'm not just clicking my attack button, you know? And then I think in turn, by doing that kind of stuff, your players then, instead of just saying, I swing with, for my ax for 10, they're going to go, you know, like, I take my ax and aim for the legs as I cleave with all my might. I think that could help then bring the players in to be that ex bring the extra description this too and therefore less work on your part. Yes, that's that's really the idea. <laughs> uh so yeah, I think you know, this is this is a great book. It is small, it's compact. The the rings are nice and that you can, you know, hold it and fold it and easily fits amongst binders and papers behind mm -hmm. your GM screen, what have you. It's not huge. Like there's a, a lot of content in it, but I think it's manageable that you can look at the table of contents and quickly find whatever it is that you need to reference in the moment. So for me, if, if you're a game master, I, I think this is an awesome tool as they describe it or toolkit. Uh, to to help just, just it's kind of like a safety net just to help you feel like you have something to fall back on if you need it and i want to take a quick second to describe as you said quickly more of the appearance of the item it is smaller which is nicer so you don't have another uh, full book to lug around with you the design uh the graphic design of each page i think is very nicely laid out and colorful like you'll start to recognize like this is the critical hit page versus the name page like i think it was the melee one that had like looked like blood splatter hmm going on with it. So it sort of tries to minimally, but fit the theme of whatever you're looking up. So I think that's a really nice thing. And things are separated into chapters. You still are probably going to use that, uh, the uh, glossary and index to find exactly. I mean, maybe if you use enough, you know where, if you're looking for loot or ranged critical hits to flip to it really fast. But still, like I, I think it's it's designed to be that addition to your Pathfinder D and D book. It's not going to be a whole another bestiary book for you to carry along. I would love to see this in other flavors. You know, I think you could use this for something like Path, uh, not Pathfinder, Starfinder. Yeah. Granted, there is going to be some shifting. Like you have to think, what is the sword translate to or something? But you know, you could probably shift the names around a little bit, and even just having that, I think 
it, like I said, for me, it would feel a lot better than try to pull something out of thin air. Um, like the one, the going back to the campaign, my at least my notorious that I'm too hard on. I had a I think two sessions later, one or two. I actually did a lot more planning. Of uh, it's pretty much I. It was a little bit of railroad to start getting you there, mostly because it turns out having pre med students, it's hard to get the convince you to uh, players to do, get medicine because they're like, we know the cure for this or what is this. But I, I forced you guys into a boarded up hospital mm -hmm. where uh, a mad scientist was doing experiments, and that worked out much better, you know. So, having something that's sort of in a sense pre made for you, I think, can really help that long way with those smaller details, which I think are almost as important as the major plot line of the story. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, there's a lot of genres out there. Uh, it'd be cool if they did follow ups to this book. And, you know, charts like this where you roll for things and role playing games exist elsewhere. You can find some online and stuff, but these are all really quality ones. And it's just really nice to have them in one convenient package and well designed, uh, fun to mm -hmm. look through. A cool book, roll and play, recommended from us. And we are giving you the chance right now, if you're watching this at home uh, at the time of the video's release, you can try to win a copy. Uh, they sent us an extra one, and we are going That's to... That's right. Uh, it's right here <laughs> on the back shelf where I usually put the games. Uh, there are two different covers. You'll be getting the coveted blue cover. That's right. Uh, the way that you can try to win this, uh, we will put further instructions on the screen and in the text box below. But if you leave a comment on this video, let us know. We want to hear from you. What is the name of an NPC or even one of your own characters that you particularly have enjoyed from a campaign that you have played in uh, from Dungeons and Dragons or any uh, role-playing setting? Because, mm -hmm. of course, that's one of the biggest things that you got to do in role-playing games is come up with names on the fly, as this book will help you with. So you please let us know one of those, leave a comment, and we will randomly choose one of you to win this book. Again, it's Roll and Play. You can uh, find it. You can buy it right now as a, th in this format or as just a PDF, if that's more your thing. Uh, also, let us know if you've had the chance to try it out. What do you think about it or any other uh, role-playing books or advice you might want to recommend? Otherwise, this has been Roll for Crit. We would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. If you choose to support us, turn to page 25.